Hello, welcome to Heart's Happiness Podcast. My name is Mabry. I'm a trauma transformation coach and mentor. And this is the place where we help you to heal from your past trauma so you can step into your authentic self, the person that you came here to be, and learn how to create a life that makes your heart happy. And then my wish for you is through that journey that you uncover the reason you're here so that you can then go on to heal the world in your unique way and together we can break cycles of trauma. Hello my loves, welcome back for another episode of Heart's Happiness. So I had a whole episode recorded and planned for you. It was a guest episode which you're still going to get, it's going to be next week. But I was on my walk this morning and I was doing a walking meditation, which I'm loving. It's a Joe Dispenza one. And I was doing it and I felt really cool to talk about empaths and highly sensitive people today and just my own journey with it, how it led it, me to my work, how I find a lot of my clients and people that are attracted to me and my work are highly sensitive, empathic people, some who don't even know they are. So that's why I thought I'd go into this and how special I think you all are, and that you are here for such greatness. So I really wanted to dig into all of that today and share what came up for me during my walk, Um, because I have a three-day event, which would be perfect for you. It's called Turn Your Story Into Purpose, and it's on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of April, 6 p.m. UK time. I'm gonna talk about that in a bit more detail in a moment, but it's 33 pounds at the moment pre-sale. And if today's podcast resonates with you, then this event could be a really powerful three-day event for you because it's all about turning our story into our power, into our purpose, and really following our birthright, what we're here for. And if we're empaths and highly sensitive people or on that spectrum, then we've got something amazing to offer the world. And maybe it's for a reason. And that's what I would share with you, like how my story has made me realize that I'm here to do what I do the bad stuff of it and the good stuff. So we're going to get into all of that. I feel like it's going to be a long one today because I've got lots to share. So I want to get into how this all began. Like I've known that I am an empath for a long time. So I feel people's feelings a lot. Like if somebody is sad, I can really feel it in my body, like in my heart. Or if somebody's going through something or sometimes I can feel things off people and they don't even tell me and I've always had that ability since I was very very young um since I was a baby I would say so I could always tell how much pain my mum my dad and my grandparents were when I was around them and I've just always been that way and it was a lot but it's just been the way I've been my whole life um and it's such a beautiful quality, but I really feel like it's been taken advantage of many, many times. And also I feel like I haven't had the best boundaries and I've also not taken care of myself. And I'm really in the season of life right now where I am really honoring who I am. So my sensitivities and my nature and actually really putting that as a priority. So building my life and my business around what do I need to be my best self? And that's why I've been really exploring being an empath. And I sort of stumbled upon that I'm also a highly sensitive person. And that had never really resonated with me before, but I hadn't really delved into it. And I came across the empathic spectrum. So if you imagine like a spectrum and we're all on it. Um, so on one end of the spectrum is narcissist and on, on the other end is empaths. So if we've got narcissists these are the people that are really only concerned about their own emotions their own needs um their own feelings their own lives being the center of attention that kind of thing and we have empaths on the other end which are you know we have this ability to feel people's emotions and in very deep ways we really care we really want to help um And we're very much about other people than we are ourselves. Now, I really think this empathic spectrum is so plagued by childhood trauma because when we are growing up in a traumatic environment, we learn how to survive and we will do one of those things, you know, like either we'll learn to put ourselves first and be that narcissist or we'll be on the spectrum of um, being more empathic, right? So 
people that listen to my podcast tend to be more towards the empath end and, and less towards the narcissist end. And we need to really help you to connect to your own needs and how you feel and putting yourself first and having boundaries because that is so alien to you and it feels so um, unsafe within your body. And that's what, when I've been exploring this empathic spectrum and I came across like the highly sensitive people, which is before, earlier on in the spectrum so if you imagine narcissists at one end empaths at the other then from narcissists we go into people that are loving and empathic but you know they're not feeling other people's emotions they're not like maybe you know feeling scared to put themselves first because they can feel the other person's emotions so strongly and then we have highly sensitive people that are also on the spectrum so you could be highly sensitive but not fully empath and that means we have a low threshold for stimulation a lot of need for alone time sensitivity to light and sound and smell aversion to large groups um it takes highly sensitive people longer to wind down after a busy day um, and they're typically introverts and what people say about empaths is you know that they are they could be introverts or extroverts um, but we can actually absorb emotions from other people um, and highly sensitive people don't typically do that um, and we can feel emotions physically um, and energetically and a very spiritual and intuitive so it's a spectrum you could be anywhere along it and what I discovered yesterday actually when I've been doing some research into this that oh I'm super highly sensitive as well and actually I was so unaware of this so when I used to work in London and I used to have my whole other life before I started healing I didn't really know who I was I had really turned off from how intuitive I am, how highly empathic I am, and also how highly sensitive I am. And it's only now, because I really have set up my life to really embrace who I am. So I don't, I'm not in busy environments very much. I am an, I live in nature. I have a lot of alone time and I absolutely love it. And I'm thriving in lots of ways because of it. I now notice how much I was disassociated with my body and with my own needs. Because when I go to like a big event now, like when I went to um, the award ceremony I went to recently, I came home and I got myself into a salt bath and I turned the lights off and I had no sound on. And when I've been to a few big events, which have been amazing, like I've really enjoyed them, but the amount of people, the amount of noise, the amount of sound, it was all too much. And what I'm realizing now is for my clients that are highly sensitive, empathic, is our nervous systems get really overwhelmed by all of that that we take in because we're not just taking in what normal people take in we're taking in so much more we're taking in like the little way that somebody said something and the meaning behind it and how they feel about something and that really can take our energy away so what's been happening to me while I've been running my business for the last few years is I've been coming more and more sensitive and more and more intuitive and more and more connected to myself, more and more empathic. Like I can really feel things when I'm working with clients that I'm being guided in a way and it's it's great because I'm becoming beautifully sensitive in a way that can help other people. But it really led to a lot of my burnout as well because I wasn't having the strongest boundaries to take care of myself uh, in that space. So it's almost like I knew this because in my old world, I worked in a very masculine, very logical, computer-based sort of background. So it wasn't based on intuition. It wasn't based on creativity. It wasn't based on um, using my empath skills, right? Even though I was still using them because I work with people and whatever. But it's almost because I knew that I was struggling so much with trauma that I couldn't access that part of me yet. But now that my life is so much safer, those skills are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I, which is amazing because I'm stepping more and more into who I am. So you might find that the more that you are healing on your healing journey and that you're starting to connect more to your authenticity and to yourself, and you're starting to notice some of those um, highly sensitive um, skills of yours or you're starting to feel that calling in your heart to help others more or you're you're realizing that 
while you were healing that oh my god I was using this love that I have of helping others to like deal with my toxic family or to be with that toxic relationship or that toxic friendship or I was using these natural skills I have to want to serve and to want to help but I was using it in a way that people took advantage of or that was not great for me and actually isn't what why I love doing this you don't want to take be taken advantage of right like you love to help others and you love and what other people are going through means so much to me and to you right so like when I I I can't watch the news and a lot of empaths and highly sensitive people can't and it's not because I don't care it's because I care too much so if I was to watch a um news article I wouldn't be able to sleep and I would just be obsessed with how can I help and I would deprive myself of my own needs in order to help that's how obsessive I could be about it which is why I cannot watch it so and all what I can do is what I'm doing here which is helping others to heal so that we can all collectively solve some of the world's problems and that's part of the reason why I'm holding this workshop turn your story into purpose because I think so many of you that listen to this podcast that are drawn into the world of like personal development and self-help have been that person that's been trying to help and save your whole family um, and friends and boyfriends and girlfriends and whoever else because you have that natural desire you have that empathy in a really strong way and you have those sensitivities they may have been taken advantage of and you may not have taken the best care of them and yourself because you've put other people before your before your before yourself and that's part of your healing journey is for you to become healthier in that way to have boundaries to take care of yourself to look after your gifts to not surround yourself with people and energy that drain you. And when you're on this healing journey, what I find with clients is they start to realize that the work environment that they're in is not good for them as an empathic, highly sensitive person, or even because they've got this strong calling in their heart. Now, I knew that I wanted to do what I do now, like over 10 years ago, but I was just too scared because I didn't know how, I didn't know what the steps were, I didn't know like, if anyone cared or if I could help someone or if it would be a waste of time or, you know, so all of those thoughts, which I hear all of the time now from clients and people that I speak to is like, oh, but there's so many coaches out there or, oh, um, yeah, but, you know, I really need my monthly salary and if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be able to survive. This is all like how we're raised, right, in the society that we live in, which is you have to do a job like this in order to survive and that's just not true. You have this beautiful skill naturally since you were a child and that was given to you for a reason and you can do such magic with that and you can also not only help other people change the world in your own way but you can also build a life that really supports and nourishes your sensitivities rather than society, which generally doesn't care about us introverted, highly sensitive, empathic people as much, even though we're the ones that create music, that change people's lives, that allow people to heal, that are, you know, creative, create art, poetry. Um, We're pretty freaking magical, which is why we have the skills that we have. And often we are born into families where there is just a shitload of trauma. Like I said, the trauma will generate it as well. But I do, I do believe that, you know, it was, that was like our destiny. So that, that's how I make my peace out of, you know, the awful stuff that happened to me is that I came into this family, experienced a lot of trauma and my superpower of empathy and highly sensitiveness was born out of that. And I was talking to one of my um, friends and actually she's the one that's going to be on the podcast next week. And we were talking about being highly sensitive and empathic. And she did say that, you know, when your mum's under a lot of stress in her pregnancy, that the the fetus can start to learn to be sensitive from conception. So that could have happened to me because my mum definitely had a, a very difficult pregnancy with what was going on in her environment. But either way, if we look at it spiritually, I believe that my soul came to this planet to do something different, to 
you know, to awaken it, to help it to heal in some way um, for my own spiritual growth and all that kind of stuff. Like if I was to think about it spiritually, I do believe that's what happened. So that I picked my family. I picked the family that I was born into. And, you know, I still have quite big struggles. Like I have things going on in my family at the moment that have been quite big. I've been through my own journey in the last year or so, a year and a half, you know, navigating my own grief of my miscarriage and health things. And I've had things along the way. So it's not like I just had the childhood trauma and then I got over it and now my life's great. I still have those challenges. And I could sit there and be really heartbroken about, oh, this is happening to me and like all this bad stuff had already happened to me. And don't get me wrong, I have those real woe is me victim kind of moments it's natural and I get angry and sad and grieve and all of those things but when I have some time and some space from it I'm like oh I'm learning from this and when I learn from this I get to teach someone I get to share it like I feel so grateful now it's taken me some time but I feel so grateful for my miscarriage and for the space that I've had prior to my children coming because I have had time to heal myself in a way that I never had before. So really to heal my womb, to heal my body of the trauma that I was carrying. That's kind of what that miscarriage led me into. And I was avoiding that, to be honest. And I was avoiding some of the ways I wasn't protecting myself or having boundaries for how sensitive I was. So I was allowing myself often to get burnt out because I was so giving and I wasn't replacing that energy. And again, without that miscarriage, I wouldn't know that. Without that miscarriage, I wouldn't know about how trauma gives us chronic disease and chronic symptoms, which is what I've been um, dealing with. I wouldn't know that because I'm super nice and um, have been very codependent that that could have made me sick. And this is so many of the things that my clients go through because they're very similar to me. So if I hadn't had my miscarriage, I wouldn't have figured any of that out and I wouldn't be able to tell you the things that I'm going to be telling you over the coming weeks and months and years and it's because of those challenging those those traumas that that pain that I have been able to sit with and allow myself to heal and come up with the medicine that I need to go forwards and then I can share that with someone else so if you are someone that's been having shit happen to you like you know abusive relationships or you know, narcissist parents or crazy families or loads of drama or, you know, like people taking advantage of your beautiful heart, your kindness, um, struggling with boundaries, all of these things, um, healing from whatever your traumas are, um, struggling with romantic love, all of that jazz that's been happening, um, which I can completely relate to because it was me as well. That could, if you look at it in a way which is, I'm highly sensitive, I'm empathic, I have this strong desire and love to help others, I've been doing it in the wrong places, I've been attracting the wrong people, but now I'm healing on myself, I'm working on myself, and I'm slowly figuring this out. And by the way, you can still be healing, figuring stuff out, and still serve others, and still change lives. I mean, you guys have been full-scale front row seat to my healing journey while I've been serving and healing and especially in the last couple of years since I've left my job that has cranked up to like a thousand percent so you have been seeing that I have been seeing clients I've been creating content and I have been healing myself and that seeped into my work at times but I didn't fully know all of the answers yet but you're going to be seeing that a lot more over the coming months and years etc so you may be going through something, maybe a physical health challenge, maybe you've got diabetes or something and you're working on that, maybe you're learning how to put boundaries in with a parent or you're breaking a pattern that you've been in with relationships with love, maybe you've overcome an addiction and you're using, I don't know, like yoga or mindfulness to help you, whatever it is, you can use all of these things to create your career to, and in fact, that's maybe that calling in your heart that you can feel, but you get scared and you don't prioritize it and you allow all of the other stuff, all of the shadow side of being empathic and highly sensitive to take over. Like 
you ignore it. And, you know, I hear of the most wonderful people in the world, big hearted, empathic, highly sensitive, but because they've been putting everybody else first, that they can struggle with money because they don't invest in themselves or because they don't put themselves first. And it doesn't have to be that way. You can use your wonderful skills to create abundance in so many ways. And that is part of your healing journey as well, is to learn that, to go, okay, I'm gonna, all this energy I've been putting into everybody else, I'm gonna claw that back and put that into myself. And I'm gonna see what I can create with what I've learned and how I can help people with that, earn some money from that, create a life from that, continue to heal and take care of myself, change my life and change the life of others. Literally, because you were made (laughs) with the skill set. It's pretty cool, I think. But it's a real journey to get there. So for me, like I said, it started all in the womb and I was very highly sensitive empathic, etc. From from that point, I did turn off a lot of my sensitivities. So like noise and smell and all of these things has turned up again late, later in life. But I learned very young to turn that all off because I was probably told off so much for being so moany or being so sensitive. So I kind of shoved all of that down and, you know, used things like alcohol and food and things to deal with the emotions. I would feel other people's feelings or feel really sensitive to like criticism and what people would say. Like it would be heartbreaking for me because I could never do that to somebody else. And I could spend, and I could still spend hours overthinking a comment that someone said or um, how cruel somebody was or something like that. Like that would really contaminate my energy field and I'd be thinking about it for ages. And I've been like that for a long time. So I've tried to like survive that by over giving and overdoing and over functioning and that you know really took my life down a darker road because I had no energy for myself but soon I discovered healing and started to get better by healing my inner child it's been a real journey but I still see how I sort of have a lot of behaviors to protect myself from the empath skills and the highly sensitive skills so I will shovel a lot down I would would go to things I didn't want to go to because that's what society or people expected of me and you know have to get wasted and want to deal with it things like that and that's really changed now but it's a real learning and you know discovering that there was so much pressure in society like you feel like you're the weird one because you feel everything so much more you're so deep Um, you know, you want so much more from this life experience, you know, and other people are just okay with, you know, I don't know, Instagram perfection and things like that. Like it's a real, you're like, you're so deep and you've got this deeper soul and, um, you know, and you just love like quiet time and hanging out yourself and people think it's weird, but you just are like, maybe I am weird but the thing is is what the point of this podcast is for you to really embrace this and see it as your incredible superpower which is amazing that is here to help others and you can be brave enough to go out and to create something to help other people and like I said come to my masterclass turn your story into purpose and I'll help you with that Um, But then you can basically really prioritize taking care of yourself. So learning to have boundaries with people so that you don't try to fix everyone. So you don't uh, put everybody else before yourself. So you keep yourself away from certain energies that don't feel good so that you learn to say no more so you like have even internal boundaries where you don't try to fix someone unless they ask or pay you you know um making time for alone time for being in nature for meditation for connecting with yourself for journaling with yourself as an empath and a highly sensitive person that connection to yourself is so important but everybody else is so loud that you kind of get drowned out and what you really want to do is connect to yourself more using those things sleep is incredible important resource which i have really struggled over the years because of my sensitivities my nervous system can be really um jangled 
like from even going to like a wedding or going into town and it being all a bit loud it takes me a really long time to settle and calm my system down to be able to go to sleep and that's taken me a while to realize that as well and another big thing which is huge is about consumption so first of all about what you are consuming so whether that be tv media um the people that you're speaking to, the phone calls that you're having, the work environment, whatever you're consuming around you, like looking at whether that is good for you and how that makes your energy feel is really important. And what I'm starting to realize now as well is things like sugar, caffeine, um, alcohol, these things really affect me because I'm highly sensitive and so is my body to shit, to toxins, to negative thinking, to all of these things. So obviously everybody is, but more so. So if I have sugar, my sleep will be bad. If I, um, you know, am around a really negative person, it drains me, it could affect my sleep. So really starting to notice what you're consuming and how it makes you feel. Like I ha- I've been having out of choice, a lot of weekends where I don't really see anyone and I'm choosing to just hang out with my husband and have my alone time. So I've been like reading a whole book over a weekend. I've been going for nature walks. I've been like slowly cooking a meal. I've been just doing things like that. Very, very slow, very, very um, nurturing. And I've absolutely loved it. And I, I think a lot of people think I'm being like I'm really depressed or something or I'm being like a hermit. But I absolutely love it and it's so good for me. And I'm being really selective about what podcasts I listen to or what I'm watching on the TV or um, what book I'm reading. Like just because what I realise is that I can get energy from something or I can, it can drain me. Now, my husband loves some scary stuff that we watch sometimes and I can, I'm okay with that at a certain time of day. So it's just really understanding like when I'm consuming things, what it's doing to my sensitivities and what it's doing to my health. Because some of those things, they can feel so overwhelming and then they sort of really trigger your nervous system and get you really out of balance. And what I find from my clients that are very giving and very sensitive is that they can feel very overwhelmed a lot of the time. Um, Like it all feels like too much in their brain. So what you've really got to do is slow down your pace. Like you've really got to start to like take things out of your diary. This is why, again, being an entrepreneur is such an amazing thing to do for yourself because you can really build a schedule around your um, sensitivities. So since I've been running my business, it has been busy because I've had so many things to do and I've been pushing myself like I used to in the corporate world, but it's a completely different energy working for myself. So I'll be running from one thing to one thing one to another thing, and then I'm working from my house, and then I'm going downstairs, and I'm not really turning off. So but therefore, my nervous system is activated all the time. Um, and when we're highly sensitive as well, we can be finding it really hard to be busy a lot, like it's bad for us. So it's noticing all these things about yourself and creating a life that supports that. And what's amazing is the skills that you have can be fit beautifully into a journey of entrepreneurship and helping others. And you can build your life around those sensitivities. You know, I when I started this, I just had a story to share and I started sharing it in the podcast and through blogs. And then eventually it became a business. It wasn't to begin with, it was just me sharing my story. But what I've found from doing this work is I found my people. I found other people that have had these traumatic backgrounds that have been really, really sensitive, who have been trying to help the world. And I find people that are like myself, all from being authentic, being myself. And I craved like deep conversations like I'm having with you guys. Like I craved it so much. And now I get to do it as part of my job. Like I'm creating this podcast with you now because when I was on my walk, I was like, oh my God, I have so much to talk about around this that I want to share with people because I think it could really help them. But it also helps me too. 
So that's the beauty of going down this journey of helping others and entrepreneurship is we can use our empathy and our highly sensitive nature for so much good and we can also use it to really support and nourish ourselves too. Like this morning, it was beautiful and sunny, it's raining now, but this morning when I went for my walk, the sun was shining and I was listening to my meditation and I just felt so inspired, so connected to something bigger than me and it felt so incredible, I felt so energized, I came home, I did my qigong exercise to like bring in energy into my body, I had my healthy breakfast and then I came on to record this with you guys like and I've got like a few other content things, I've got one client later, go for a walk with my mum, you know it's just this incredible life that I've got to create and not see my sensitivities or my deep nature or my traumas as a bad thing but as a beautiful thing that qualified me for this job that I do. Yeah, I did courses and things, but the thing that makes me qualified to do this job is my life experience and my signature soul print. That's what makes me qualified to do this. That means I can talk about empathy and high sensitivity and all this kind of stuff from this perspective of what I've been through and how I'm living in the world and actually how it makes me such an incredible coach and healer and mentor because I have those amazing skills but how they have hindered me especially in terms of my health my energy levels burnout even the illness in my body and that's more and more what I'm hearing lately being nice not having boundaries not taking care of yourself Being that person takes its toll on our health and we want to step into our power as sensitive people. Use those skills for what they're here for to make a difference, yes, but put ourselves first, take care of ourselves. So when I'm inviting people like yourself to come to my three-day event, it's because I want to empower as many people that are healers naturally to uncover what that is. And for some of you, you may know what that is. Um, You might be like, this is what I wanna help people with. Some of you may not. Some of you may need help to figure out what that purpose is. And we'll be talking about that in this three-day event. So Monday the 22nd, which is the first day, we'll be going through your story, your power. So we'll be looking at your professional life, your personal life, your sensitivities, all of these things, because the answer of what you can do is kind of in there. But what happens is, what I found with the work that I do here, is I would just be following a breadcrumb. So in the old days, the breadcrumb was to create a podcast, and then it was to you know create a course, and then it was to train in certain things. Today, the breadcrumb was to record this podcast and share it with you guys. Um, and I have other breadcrumbs, like write my book and to create some learning resources, which is something that I'm working on at the moment. So I, I just follow those little breadcrumbs um, to keep putting things out into the world that can help. And sometimes they help one person, sometimes they help a thousand. I never really know how it's gonna <laughs> work until I start doing it. And I'm not perfect. And I'm not like as good as somebody else out there. My marketing is still developing. My sales, all of those things I'm still working on. I'm still figuring out who I am. I'm, I've been pretending to be someone else my whole life. That has been a journey in itself. But I am able to do that because I'm on this journey of entrepreneurship and growth and healing. And the best thing of all is I get to create a schedule that is supportive of me. So when I, at the end of the day, I'm like, how are my stress levels? I was still a little bit too stressed. Okay, let's do a little bit less. Because I can still get to where I want to and grow the business I want to but I don't have to do it in a rush and it can take a little bit longer. That's okay because I am my most important resource. And for you guys as well, this is what you wanna be taking all into in order to give yourself that life, to make your heart happy is to really embrace those sensitivities about you and not see it as a bad thing, okay? Because it can feel like something that can make us ill and can burn ourselves out but actually it's such a powerful gift. And when I calm the noise of the world around me around, um, so things like other people, like I said, I spend a lot of time worrying about other people. So when I calm all of that down, 
I can really connect to my intuition and it really guides me in such a beautiful way. Um, for example, last week, and you may have even noticed this actually, when I did the podcast last week, I was doing a call out for one-to-one. But when I've been meditating, I've been really getting the message from my body that one-to-ones for me, I've got to can't like stop. And that's because of my own journey of like my conception journey and things like that. And my sort of body was like, for that not to, for me not to do that. And I have got some financial commitments. So I was like, okay, well, what feels really good? What feels expansive in my body? And actually I've been working with a group of entrepreneurs uh, for the last uh, for three, three months. And we were working together for another three months, but I was like, oh, let me just offer them to make that a year and give them a discount. And it felt really good. I love working with them. I will be doing some things to bring in new entrepreneurs, but I really wanted to carry on with this group. It just felt really good. So I offered them something and, you know, within hours I had made like 12,000 pounds, just giving them what they need and taking care of myself. Like how wild is that? All from listening to my intuition and my inner guidance. And so often I can be so switched off to that because I'm so exhausted from using my empathy, from using my highly sensitive skills and for not taking care of myself properly. And when I'm like that and I'm feeling very frazzled, my sleep will get bad, my health will get bad and I would have made everybody else more important than me. But when I take care of myself as the, the most important resource you know, deciding not to go to certain things, keeping social plans lighter, all of that kind of stuff. I am so much more powerful and I come up with so much better ideas. And this is again why I am so passionate about helping you guys with these beautiful abilities because in the wrong hands, in certain business coaches, they are not the most gentle with these skills. And they may push you more into that masculine energy to create, to push, to push, to push, to push, which can be so damaging for your amazing qualities and also be detrimental to the success of your business. So yes, I did not start this journey as a business coach and I still don't believe I am a business coach, but I am a self-healing coach. I am a person that helps people to transform from trauma and I can help you to turn whatever trauma you've been into into your career, into a way of earning money, more money than you can ever imagine, um, to build a life that's full of freedom, that feels spacious, that feels good to you, that makes you happy, um, that makes you enjoy your life right now. And I feel like when, I, I mean, I've loved the people that I've worked with, but that side was never really taken into account. And it's only through being on the journey as an empath that I'm like, "Mm, if I was to go again, I wish somebody had told me this and I wish someone had told me to set up my business in this way. And with my clients that I have now that are setting up businesses, I will call them out and say, you're working too much. Um, You, your nervous system is dysregulated. So you're going to be coming from that space. And when we're coming from that space, we don't attract the best clients. We don't attract the best money. We don't create health for ourselves and we want a heart's happiness life. We don't want just a success. We want everything. And learning to use our beautiful skills like empathy and highly sensitive nature is a superpower to use in our in our purpose. But we have to set up our businesses in a way that really takes care of us. So that three-day event, 22nd, 23rd and 24th of May, 6 p.m. UK time every single day for an hour. First day we'll be covering what your story is and how we can turn that into your purpose. And that will be look different, but there's some exercises we're gonna do together. Second day, the biggest thing that stops everybody from doing this, what is it? It's money, right? Oh, I couldn't do that because I don't have a partner. I couldn't do that because, you know, my kids really need me. I couldn't do that because my mum's sick. I couldn't do that because, you know, all the excuses that we tell ourselves, why we can't go for our dreams. And then we're on our deathbed and we never did it and we wished we did. So the biggest reason that stops so many people is, you know, the money block. But we will be talking about different types of unsafety and what we do about that. Because the unsafety stops us taking action. And that means we're in the same place year upon year upon year. 
I have seen people who are going through things in their workplaces, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And because of that fear around money, they will stay rather than set themselves free and create something for themselves. And then the third one is around taking soul aligned action. So following your intuition and your inner guidance to create your plan to like be able to move forward. So that's kind of the things that we'll be talking about. So you should be able to get going on your purpose after um, the event. So do come and join me. It's 33 pounds this week. Next week it's going up to 44 and then it'll be going up to 55. So I can't wait to see you guys there and really help you to cultivate your story, your skills, and kind of merge them all together to make a unique dish, which is your purpose. So I will leave the link for the event in the episode notes, but you can also message me at hearts underscore underscore happiness at on Instagram or manpre at heartshappiness.co.uk if you want to use us, use us, <laughs> if you want to join me and, you know, if you've got any questions. And just remember that your a empath and a highly sensitive person for a reason you feel things more for a reason things annoy you about the world and people and how disconnected they are or how they're so obsessed with like money or moving forwards and all this other stuff and looking perfect online like it annoys you because you want more than that you want a life more than that and you want to create change in this world. Like you've got all of the skills, you've got everything that you need that you just need a little bit of guidance. So come and join us. It's going to be an amazing event. I can't wait. I can't wait to support you guys. Like even if you just are telling your story on your podcast afterwards, or you create a YouTube channel, or you start creating a blog, or maybe you self-publish, or maybe you just start, I don't know, doing an Instagram page and sharing your story. It could be something as simple as that. It doesn't even have to be like a big business entrepreneur idea. That could be the little nugget that is born from you coming to that event. So do come join us. As I said, link is in the episode notes and I will speak to you next week. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Don't forget to follow, subscribe, tell your friends about the podcast and leave a review. Good or bad, I want to hear what you think and make sure you follow us on Instagram, hearts underscore underscore happiness and I will see you in the next episode.